In this video, I'll be covering jQuery effects. We can use effects to animate elements. For example, we might use an effect to cause an element to fade into or out of view. Let's start by looking at the HTML document that we'll be using. We have h1, h2, and h3 heading tags. And up here in the head section, we have a style specified that sets the background color of the h2 element. We are going to be applying effects to the h2 element, so setting the background color of this element will help us to see what's happening. Here is the JavaScript code that we'll be using. As you can see, we are using the click event with the h1 heading tag. The code that we put right here will be run when the user clicks on the h1 heading. So now let's add an effect. We'll start with a selector, so as usual, type a dollar sign followed by a pair of parentheses. We want our effect to be applied to the h2 element, so type h2 between a pair of quotation marks. Then type dot hide followed by a pair of parentheses, and then end the statement with a semicolon. The height event will cause the H2 element to disappear by changing the height, width, and opacity. We can specify the speed of this event by putting a number in these parentheses. The number that we use is in milliseconds. A millisecond is a thousandth of a second. So if you want the event to last for one second, use the number 1000. And now let's take a look at this in our browser. So we can see our three heading tags, and when I click on this first H1 heading, we'll see the H2 heading hide. Let's look at that one more time. I'll refresh the browser to bring it back. And notice when I click on this, that you'll see the height, width, and the opacity change. And you'll also notice that the heading below it moves up, because the H2 heading that disappeared is no longer taking up space. So let's look one more time. I'll refresh the page, and then click the H1 heading. And now let's go back to our JavaScript code. And let's take this line right here that we've typed in, and let's copy it, and let's paste it up here. So by putting this statement right here, this will now be run as soon as our HTML page loads. And if we remove this number that's in the parentheses here, then the H2 element will be hidden instantly. And now let's come down here and change the height effect to show. So now, as soon as our HTML document loads, the H2 element will be hidden, but when we click on the H1 heading, then the H2 heading will appear. And the show effect that we're using, just like the height effect, also changes the height, width, and opacity. So let's try this out. So after refreshing the page, the H2 element is hidden, and so when I click on the H1 heading, you can see that the H2 heading comes into view. Now let's change the show effect to toggle. This effect allows us to toggle back and forth between show and hide whenever we click the H1 heading. So let's look at this in our browser. So I'll click on the H1 heading. And now we can see that the H2 heading appeared, and then I'll click again on the H1 heading, and then it disappears again. And so this will just keep toggling back and forth every time that I click this. Another effect that we can use is called Slide Up. And notice that the U is capitalized. The Slide Up event hides elements by changing their height. And since we're going to be hiding this element, we don't want it to be hidden as soon as our page loads. So come up here to this statement right here and add two forward slashes at the beginning. And that will turn this line into a comment so it will not be run. 
So let's try this in our browser. And I'll click on the H1 heading, and we can see that the H2 heading was hidden by changing its height. So let's look at that again. I'll refresh the browser, and then I'll click on the H1 tag. And there's also a slide down effect that we can use. So let's try this one. And here again, notice that the D is capitalized. And this time we want to hide the H2 element as soon as the page is loaded. So I'm going to remove these comment marks. And then let's try this one out. So I'll click on the H1 heading. And we can see the H2 heading appear. And the slide down effect causes the H2 heading to appear by changing its height. We can also use a slide toggle effect. And here the T is capitalized. And this one will alternately show and hide the element every time we click the H1 element. So let's try this out. I'll click on the H1 tag and it shows it. And then I'll click again and now it hides it. And then again, every time I click this, it'll toggle between hiding and showing it. There is also an effect that will hide the element just by changing its opacity. And this one is called Fade Out. And here the O is capitalized. And for this example, we need to comment out the first line of code here. And now let's look at this. So I'll click on the H1 heading, and you can see that the H2 heading fades out of view. Then when it completes fading out of view, you'll notice that this heading element on the bottom then moves up into place. So let's look at that one more time. So I'll click on the H1 heading, we see it fade away, and then the bottom heading moves up. There is also a fade in effect that we can use. And here the I is capitalized. And for this example, we're going to remove the comment marks here. And we'll try this in the browser. So I'll click on the H1 heading, and then the H2 heading fades into view. And just like the others that we looked at, there's also a fade toggle. And here the T is capitalized. And this effect will toggle between fade in and fade out. So let's try this one. So I'll click on the H1 heading and it fades into view. I click again and it fades out. There is also another option for the fade effects. And this one is called fade to. And this effect will change the opacity until we reach an opacity that we've specified. And to specify the opacity that we want this to fade to, add a comma after the first number that's here, and then enter a number that's between zero and one. And zero represents zero opacity, and one represents full opacity. So I'll set this to 0 0.3, which will give us 30% opacity. And I don't need this first statement anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it. And now let's look at this in the browser. And now when I click on the H1 heading, the opacity of the H2 heading should change until it reaches 30%. And now let's go back and change this effect back to fade toggle. And so we also need to remove this second number here. And now I'll show you how you can delay the fade toggle effect. So if you come over here right after the selector and type dot and delay, and then follow that by a pair of parentheses, this will allow us to delay the fade toggle effect. In the parentheses, we specify how long we would like it to be delayed. And this is also in milliseconds, which remember is one thousandth of a second. 
So I'm going to put 2000 in here, which will delay this by two seconds. And so now let's try this out. So I'll click the H1 heading right now, and then two seconds later, it will fade. So delay is nice to use anytime that you don't want the effect to happen right away. So let's go back over here and let's get rid of this delay. And let's change fade toggle to hide. So we've seen how to delay an event from happening, but what if we want another event to happen as soon as the current event finishes? We can accomplish this by using something called a callback function. I'll show you how to use this. So for our example, we want to hide the H2 element like we see right here, and then after it finishes hiding, then we want to hide the H3 element. So come over here to the end of the number that specifies the duration of this event, and type a comma, and then type the word function, follow that by parentheses, and then a space, and then type a couple of curly brackets. And whatever we put in the curly brackets will be run as soon as the hide effect is finished. So put your cursor between the curly brackets and hit enter to give us some room to work. And we want to hide the H3 element, so we need to create the selector for that. And let's hide this by using the fade out effect. And we'll set the duration to 1000, which will let this happen in one second. And now let's give this a try. So I'll click on the H1 heading, and the H2 heading disappears, and then the H3 heading disappears. But the H3 heading didn't start disappearing until the H2 heading completely disappeared. So let's look at this one more time. So I'll click on the H1 heading. We saw the H2 heading disappear, and then the H3 heading disappeared. So this is a nice way to use multiple effects. Well, that concludes this video. For more information on jQuery effects, visit jQuery.com. And you can find the sample code used in this video at littlewebhut.com. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.